Hello there! I'm back with another video! So this was kind of an impromptu painting. I've, I've actually been meaning to do some digital painting for like years, it feels like. Uh, I haven't really done anything since the last video I posted on Photoshop. I did a one layer challenge, I'll put the link in the card if you're curious. But that was on early January I think that I did that and now it's like a third of the way over with February and I haven't done any other digital painting and I feel so unlike myself but honestly this term has been killing me in terms of schoolwork and just life in general. I had some friends visit me from um, Europe and I had just exams and I don't know, my brother's birthday, uh, visiting my parents, having to give my dog a bath. It's just little things always adding up that just make me not have time or when I do have a bit of time I just feel so brain dead that I can't really draw. Um, I, I try to sketch during class because I, I focus better when I'm doing something with my hands anyway so I'm listening better when I'm drawing so I, I, it's something I don't draw, I just don't paint or render stuff or just things of that nature so this was a huge breath of fresh air I ended up my plans getting uh, got cancelled for yesterday when I painted this it was a Friday uh, Friday February 9th um, so yeah it was just really nice that I could just hang out and do nothing all day and then when it got to be evening I was like I need to create something and yeah so I just started painting this painting took about three hours I took a little bit of a break halfway through and yeah it's just I don't know I wasn't really too bothered with the idea I honestly just wanted to paint so I did end up spending a, a lot of time on the sketch actually for something that I was like yeah I don't care what I draw I just want to paint something um it's my character Talia, and the first, the original image I had in my mind was just um, her back turned to us, and then you can sort of see the side of her face, and then you can see her hands holding tea. Uh, I've been really obsessed with tea lately. It's so cold, the snow is just getting on my nerves. I know I've got like a, a month and a half left of winter. Well, not when well, I don't know when the actual end of winter is, but I know it's about a month and a half before the snow's gone for good. I hope global warming, please just don't put. The weather out of whack any more than it is anyway so i've been really obsessed with tea and i just actually got a new travel mug that has like a lot of um insulation i think so it's just like i made a tea uh two days ago at like 11 30 a.m and then when i finished the tea at 4 30 p.m it was still hot so yeah tea is amazing i love tea winter's just tea time well every time it's tea time there's still tea so i wanted to paint some tea but i just really didn't feel asked to try to draw some hands holding a cup i mean like, like there's some poses of hands that i just like i can draw without really thinking about them anymore but holding things like hands interacting with stuff hands holding stuff hands holding other hands those require a bit more thought and that wasn't really what i was willing to do so yeah i just asked asked the tea idea if you go back to like the original sketch you can sort of see that i tried to put like little lines to show that she's holding something but then i just erased them like nope not painting that and yeah in general the idea of this ended up as being just talia peaceful smiling profile view wearing a nice little jumper that she well i've drawn her in it before and no i've drawn her in a dress version of this jumper before i think in my sketchbook uh, it's on my Instagram if you want to see it, just scroll down a bit and you'll see it, it's hard to miss, it's not that long ago even, or not, not, it is a little bit long ago, but it's not that many posts ago is what I mean, because art is what, time is what. <laughs> so, in terms of method for this painting, honestly I have no idea what I'm doing, I'm so rusty, how does, how does Photoshop work again? I have no idea. Uh, I kind of did a sketch just with a regular hard round brush and then I was refining it, liquefying tool, liquefy tool, flipping it back and forth. I I ended up, I think, leaving it flipped opposite of how I originally sketched it because I just felt I'm always drawing people looking to... No, never mind, I draw people looking both directions equally. But still, I just felt more comfortable having her looking to the right. I know my directions, <laughs> looking to the right and then like later on I expand the canvas a little bit so she has more space to breathe and oh, about shading this hair, I started shading the hair, I haven't, like, 
I have no idea how to paint hair anymore, I've just discovered with this painting. I have no idea how to do many things, like my brain is just mush. I have been practicing gestures and like faces, I have been practicing a lot, sketching a lot, doodling a lot, but in terms of like actual artistic skills, for example, following references or picking colours or shading in general, like that's just like going out my brain and said I'm learning about what what even am I learning about um perception can deceive you and uh advertisers because I'm studying advertising in case you didn't know advertisers shape your reality it's true look it up because we we're, we're in charge of like most of your outward stimuli but anyway I started painting a hair and I just hated how it was going I didn't like I wasn't really following the soft aesthetic I was going it really didn't look like hair like you keep seeing me trying to draw little strands and then deleting them because they don't fit and I'm just like how does hair work again but also Talia's hair in particular I mean I designed her hair like this but I just feel like I never learned how to draw it properly or something I don't know it's just like I like nice long flowing hair like I like movement in my hair and her hair is a little bit harder to make movement like, I guess if, for example my friend Kid when Kid draws Talia Kid draws her hair kind of like a cloth maybe it's like a curtain and so Kim manages to incorporate a lot of shape because he he draws it like that <clears throat> sorry frog in my throat um but yeah I just I don't know as Talia's hair in particular has always been a bit of a a bit of a struggle for me so I guess next painting if I get time to do some painting today maybe I don't know <laughs> what is time what is drawing I miss drawing I love drawing uh, so if I get time to do another painting, I'll try to draw someone with longer hair. Um, but yeah, I ended up like kind of just messing around with the curves and the levels a lot. And so it was like I would duplicate a layer after I finished painting it and then just like completely change like the contrast, saturation, everything. And then try to like mute it a bit to blend it to the original colors that I picked because I just felt like they were so dead and desaturated and they didn't really fit with the kind of background that I laid in. But again, talking about the process, yeah, so lines with her brown brush, and then I did, with the chalk brush, I made, like, a mask that just did her whole, her whole outline and filled it in, and then I did individual masks for the, the three different colours, which is basically hair, skin, and then the, the jumper, and then I did some shading with, like, originally with the hair, I started with the chalk brush, and it just didn't work out, so I just went with the soft brush, and then I went to detail a little bit with the chalk brush, and then with the skin, I just went straight in with the soft brush, because we've learned previous videos that skin is friends with soft brush at first later you can do some definition with the chalk brush but at first soft brush is your friend and then overpainting I really like overpainting I don't know why I hated overpainting for something like it is kind of tedious and you do get a little frustrated when you're painting over things that you don't mean to paint over like you accidentally kind of run outside the line or you kind of run into the next material and you don't mean to but like, i guess it's, it's it's it has to do with practice i don't know like i can't ima imagine line arting that chain in that level of detail it would have been a pain in my ass so i, I kind of like that i did like this and also just it, it, it creates a more unified aesthetic altogether like in anime you can kind of really easily tell or even, especially in older anime like imagine dragon ball z is like guess which rock is gonna get blown up it's the one that looks like it's cell drawn for like animation rather than background drawn like there's always such a huge um what's the word i'm looking for dichotomy yeah i'm a college student i know fancy words there's a huge dichotomy between you know your characters and your backgrounds and the settings and like maybe even objects like you have a super realistically drawn car in a school anime where everyone has the like that k-on style yeah so it's always kind of you know like you're used to it at this point if you've seen enough of it but i don't know i just feel like in my paintings i kind of want it to be a bit more co cohesive and I made an effort, like for a while, it does, it totally, totally doesn't look like it matches what I did with the background to the character. But then I, I think I managed to pull them together some. And I'm actually quite happy with this braid. I was struggling a little bit because uh, some of the overpainting looked like very thick line art instead of just, you know, painting. And I don't, I, I wasn't sure if that's what I wanted it to look like. But then I think I managed to tweak it to the point where you can just, you can interpret the the quote unquote painted line art as um as kind of 
what's the word I'm looking for? It's just like the shadows that happen around a braid because hair tends, the way hair interacts with light, it tends to sort of look like it's just one shape that has a little combination of smaller shapes that react a little differently to light. That's why you have like the, the, the bands of light, the bands of shadow, then a couple stray hairs that aren't being part of the group. And with the braid, it's a little bit different because the braid has lots of little shapes that have their own little curves and so their own interactions with light. So every single like uptick of the braid kind of has its own little highlight and then its own little shadow and as, as well as the overlap thing creating more shadow. I don't know what I'm saying. I woke up not long ago, you can probably tell from my voice, but... Again, I was trying to fight with the hair here when I was trying to have the overtain to get, get it to look like it has strands, but at the same time, Talia's hair in particular isn't friendly with strands because of the, the, the boxy shape. But I really love the colors and her as a character. So I don't know, maybe I'll draw her as an alternate kind of, I put on a wig. Oh, Talia with a wig. Oh, now I want to draw some more. I think I'm gonna try to sketch that later. Uh, I might post it to Instagram if you're curious. You might might as well go check my Instagram. Link is in the description. And I think my favorite part about her hair is when I added these little yellow highlights in the curve because the, the background has a lot of yellow in it. And I wanted the yellow to blue gradient because I like my cool shadows. I've said it multiple times. Because, I don't know, I just really didn't feel like trying to math out what warm shadows would look like. But it would probably suit her because her her colors are a little cooler tone like she has it might not look like it especially not in this lighting but she has cooler toned skin that's why it used to be so pink in my earlier illustrations of her because like, her base was just intensely pink because it's cooler but it's not that pale if that makes any sense and for the jumper i was a lot more kind of not lazy but i was a lot more loose handed with the overpainting, I just kind of wanted to get rid of most of the scribbles that were left over from the line art and the, the, the clothes incidentally had the strongest scribbles left because I didn't kind of erase around them as much when I was cleaning up the lines. So I just kind of overpainted them really thickly with the colours that I picked and then kind of kind of shrunk them a little bit but they're not really blended them a little bit but they're not really and it just kind of gives something an aesthetic and this is the first time i've kind of done the reflected light in this way i just i dropped the bottom blue color and then i just slapped it on really haphazardly and then i duplicated it and blurred it and made it a little bit lighter and then kind of duplicated it some more until it had the opacity that i wanted uh, there you saw me draw like a tentacle thing and then i backtracked like no i don't want that and here's where i finally made the canvas larger, give her some more room to ring, breathe. Uh, more marks that I later just backtracked on. Uh, they, they, I ended up cu cutting out a lot of poses that I did when I was trying to render the background because there was a lot of kind of going to my other laptop and like scrolling through DeviantArt for inspiration and then going to grab my other laptop to see if I could like load in some custom brushes but turns out they're not compatible with this version of Photoshop and like, yeah, it was just a lot of back and forth, back and forth and then I ended up trying to you know what, it's snowy outside, let's just put some snow around here and see how that looks. I mean, I interpret it as snow, but you can interpret it as just like fairies floating around and nice little dust particles. And here I am trying to um, give the background a more kind of aesthetic rather than just a gradient. I always start off with a gradient. My mom always tells me when she sees my paintings with just the gradient, they're like, I don't like the gradient, I don't think it's gonna work. But by the end, she's like, okay, I see how you made it work. It's just, I want, I like starting off backgrounds with a gradient because it just gives me a good sense of the colors to work all the other colors off of. And then here I am starting my slew of effects. I kind of learned something, like I accidentally, I mean, there's other ways to do this, but if you make a gradient map of black to white, you can tweak the contrast. You just have to set the layer to luminosity and you can tweak the contrast as much as you want. It's a lot freer than trying to go through the adjustment contrast thing. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. And we're pretty much done here. I don't think there's that much left. And yeah, I, I made this kind of dot texture a really long time ago, but they're so close together. But anyway, yeah, uh, this is Talia. This is my painting, Photoshop. I might do some more paintings, who knows? Uh, I hope you really liked it. Again, I'm not too sure if I'm going to be able to upload regularly, but I really want to get back into painting some more. Uh, like and subscribe if you liked it, and I'll see you some other time.